Hello, my name is Keshwani. S K E S H W A N I Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the ATI T Study Manual, the sixth edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. We have been solving these problems in this book from uh, from the quiz that appeared on page 99, that began on page 99, and it is that quiz that we've been referring to as test 3. If you're interested in solving problems that appeared in the first two exam, test 1 and test 2, in the previous edition, you will find the solutions to all the problems from test 1, from day number 61 through 70, and the test 2 from 71 through 80. As a matter of fact, we have solved every single problem, math problems from this book, the fifth edition, and you will find the solutions to all of them from day 1 through 80. And today is our day number 179, which happens to be our penultimate day. After tomorrow, I will not see you again. Today is our penultimate day which is just a fancy way of saying second to the last day because tomorrow day number 180 is going to be the very last day which is which is going to cover the sixth edition just like we made 80 videos for the fifth edition from day 1 through 80 the sixth edition we began the series from day 101 there are no videos from day 181 through 100 they do not exist we begin our new series for 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 sixth edition from day 101 and it's going to end tomorrow at day 180 today we'll do Question number 27, 28, and 29, and then tomorrow we'll do the last three, question number 29, 30, and 31st. Let's get going, shall we? Penultimate, what does it mean? It just means second to the last. In case, in the event that you are interested in improving your vocabulary, you will find that we learned this word actually in our vocabulary lessons. In our vocabulary lessons on day number 11, just type in vocabulary, vocabulary words, day 11 and watch the videos and learn. Learn that, uh, learn this word and learn a whole bunch of other words. It does not hurt to have better vocabulary. Do you understand? When we open our mouth, we do not want to sound like a teenager. We want to sound like a grown person. Number 27. In 27 we are told, in number 27 we are told that uh, uh, a guy has traveled, has averaged, He's been driving, he's been driving, and we are told that he has averaged 50 miles per hour so far. We are also told that he has traveled 300 miles so far. And we are further told that he has to travel a total of, will travel for a total of 11 hours. This is where you have to pay attention. We are told it's a total of 11 hours. He has to travel a total of 11 hours. This is hours. Question simply is how many miles more does he need to go? How many more, more miles does he need to go? How many more miles does he need to travel? Given the fact that his total journey is supposed to take 11 hours, given the fact that he has been averaging 50 miles per hour, if he were to continue that speed, that's what the problem says, you have to read the problem yourself. If he were to continue that speed of 50 miles per hour, and the fact that he has already traveled 600 miles, or 300 miles rather, how many more miles does he need to go? Well, let's find out, shall we? We know that he has traveled 300 miles already. 300 miles already. And we know that he has been going at 50 miles per hour. He has been going at 50 miles per hour. 50 miles per hour. As you can clearly see that when we divide 300 by 50, it will tell us how many hours he has traveled so far. Because the miles are going to drop out, the hours are going to end up on the top. And 300 divided by 50 is 6 hours. In other words, he has already traveled 6 hours. If he has already traveled 6 hours, and if he has to travel a total of 11 hours, that implies that he needs to go, he needs to go another 
5 hours. Why 5 hours? Because 5 plus 6 is going to give us the 11 hours that he needs to go. If he needs to go another 5 hours, at 50 miles an hour, he's going to go 250 miles. 5 hours, so he has to go 5 hours. He has to go 5 hours at 50 miles per hour. Again, you can see, you must keep track of the unit. Get in the habit of keeping track of the units, even though this is very simple and you don't, you don't have to do the silly things that I'm doing here. But I'm doing it so that you can get in the habit, because once you start doing more complicated problems dealing with the dosages for patients, you have to know your units. You cannot mess up the units. You cannot end up giving patient the medicine that he was supposed to take in a week, in one day. Do you understand? So how is they going to cancel out? And we end up with 5 times 50. 5 times 50, of course, is 250. 250 what? Apples, monkeys, or bananas? Or miles? 250 miles. The answer is, he would, he would have to go 250 miles. Let's do the next one, shall we? Let's do the next one. In the next one we are told that a mechanic gets number 28 we are told that a mechanic gets three dollars for each tube repair. He's a bicycle mechanic. He's a bicycle mechanic. He, he runs a, a shop where he fixes bikes and when you bring the bike to him which requires a repair of the tube, he's going to charge you three dollars. He also charges a dollar we are told for each Pad replacement. Just like you have brake brake pads in your car, we have brake pads in our bicycle when we press the handle. And if those pads are worn out and if, if those pads need to be replaced, you take it to him and he will do it for you for a dollar a pad. Question is how much how much will he how much will he earn? Four X tubes and Y pads. Now I should tell you that the way the, the question is written in the book, there are misprints in this book. There are misprints in this question, rather. 28. Let me take a look at it and I'll tell you exactly what the misprint is. 28. It says a mechanic. At a bicycle shop are three dollars for each tire tube repair and that's it that's all it should say where it says x and y those x and y were supposed to appear at the very last sentence in the last sentence it says it says which of the following expression represents the amount of money the mechanic collects for it they meant to say not one tire one tire and one one brake they meant to say x and y so the x and y where they appear in the beginning of the question they should not have been there. Those variables x and y should have been in the last sentence and the question should have been how much is he going to earn if he repairs x tire, x tires right here. If he repairs, how much does he earn for x tubes and y pad? That's what they meant to say. Do you understand? They published this other, this version. Originally, the sixth edition. If you watch the day the, in the beginning, day 101, in the beginning, day 101, through a few videos, you will see that I'm holding a sixth edition, which has a red cover, and they pulled the red cover from the market because of, it has too many misprints. So they published this new one after having fixed the misprints, and I have found so many misprints in this book. I made a list of it here, of all the misprints here. I don't know if you can actually see how much you can see there, but those are all misprints. Anyway. So that's what they meant to say. Not one, one, <coughs> one tube and one pad, but <coughs> X tube and Y pad. So that's very simple. How much does he get? He gets three dollars for each tube repair. So if he if he if he if he if he, if he does one tube, he gets three dollars. If he's going to get if he get if he fixes two tubes, he gets six dollars. If he gets ten tubes, he gets three times ten. He's going to do. X of them. So this is how much he gets for 
the cube repair. Similarly, he gets a dollar. He gets one dollar for for pad replacement. So if he's going to do Y pad replacement, he will going to get this many dollars for the pad replacement. That's it. You can leave it like this, or you can simplify it. So three times X is just three X, and one times Y is just Y. This is how many dollars he's going to get. Except the dollar. A dollar unit is not going to appear in the answer choices because the question itself asks you how many dollars, so they don't, they don't want to repeat the unit. And that answer choice is, that answer choice is, you're looking for 3x plus y, that's b, b as in boy. b as in boy. That's two number 28. That's two number 28. It's not like these people are the only one who has ever published a book and therefore, oh my god, what a difficult job it is to make sure that it is free of typos and misprints. Books are published every day in every corner of the planet. All the other people manage to uh, make sure that they are free of typos and misprints. Why couldn't they do it in, in two attempts? I still find misprints in it. It's incompetence is the word. Number 29. It says which of the following is supported by the graph? Which of the following? Which conclusion Roger? Which conclusion? Which conclusion is supported by the graph? Here are the observations that they give us. I'm going to put it down, put them down here, 5.05, 5.8, 5.9, 5.9, 5.9, 5.9, 5.9, 5.9, 5.9, 5.9, 5.9, 5.9, 5.9, 5.9, 5.9, 5.9, 5.9, 5.9, 5.9, 5.
5, 5. So this is x axis is 5, this is 4, so 5 is going to be right here. Right here, 5, 5 actually is right there. Right. I didn't have to put the dotted line because 5 actually is sitting right on the y axis. 5, 5. Then we have 5.8, 5.88. 5.8. 8. Oh bloody hell, I'm not paying any attention at all. How did I, how did I get 9 out of this thing? 9. Just give me a second, okay? Okay, this axis that I just drew here, and this is what happens, this is all part of learning here, you see? The, the, the lowest value is 5, the highest value is 9, so I just went 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. This is good, this is all part of learning, okay? This wasn't a smart thing to do, this was not a smart thing to do, and I'll tell you why. As you look at their graph, because we are, we are trying to replicate the graph that they produced, you understand? We're not making our own graph. If we were making our own graph, it would have been fine. It would have been fine if we started this thing and we were just approximated, we can still continue. We can still continue what we're doing here. Let's continue. Why don't we? Because their, their graph goes in an increment of 0 0.5, 0 0.4. Listen, listen carefully. There goes an increment of, it doesn't go by in the increment of 1, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. It doesn't go in the increment of 1. The graph that they drew, if you look at, the, if you look at your book, the graph that, that they drew, it goes in an increment of 0 0.4, 0 0.4. So it goes from 5 to 5.4 to 5.8 to 6.2, 6.6. .6. 6.6 .6 and then 7, 7.4, 7.8, so on and so forth. But since I already made the mistake, we're just going to stick with it. The shape is not going to be different, obviously, that's the whole point. Shape is going to be the same. So let's get going. So first one is 5, 5, we did that here, 5, 5, then we have 5.8 and 8. 5.8, this is, this is 5 and this is 6, 5.8 is going to be somewhere here. 5.8 and 6. That's this part right here. We're done with that. 6.6 .6 and 10, 6.6, .6. this is 6. This is 7, this is going to be 6.5, so 6.6 is somewhere here, 6.6 .6 and 6.6 .6 .6 .6 and 10, 6.6 .6 and 10 is up here, there we go, then we have 7.4 and 4, 7.4 and 4, this is 7, this is 8, this is 7.5, so this 7.4 is going to be somewhere here, 7.4, 4, 4 is right here, voila, then we have 8.22, 8.22, this is 8, this is 9, this is 8.5, 8.2 is going to be somewhere here, 8.2 and 2. Right here, we don't need this part. And finally we have 9 and 1, 9 and 1, 1 is going to be right here. Half the 2. That's it, that's, that's our scatter, scatter plot. Now we have to do, all we have to do is join the points. So it's going to look something like this. It has a slope like this, then it becomes a steeper, then it comes down, then it becomes a little bit flatter, and then it becomes even more flat. This is what your graph looks like. The question is, by looking at this graph, what conclusion can we draw? Well, let's take, let's take a look at the conclusions. Answer choice A says, well, let's, let's first talk about this. Correct answer. I'm going to raise the start part so we have the room. And we'll raise all of this thing here also. And as I said, it's a very simple question. We can immediately see what the, what the right answer is. Because answer choice C says, answer choice, answer choice C says that a pH of 6.6 .6 corresponds corresponds to maximum rate of activity and the rate of activity is measured on the y-axis here and 6.6 .6 right here this was 6.5 this thing was 6.5 this was 6.6 .6, and it does correspond to the maximum rate of activity this is where the activity tends to be the highest activity level is the highest at 10 and that 10 corresponds to the pH of 6.6 .6. C is the right answer D answer choice D is just nonsensical Passage wise D is just nonsensical because it talks about enzymes. 
there are no bloody enzymes in the whole problems. As I said, it's nonsensical. What part of speech is nonsensical? Do you know? Nonsensical is what part of speech? Nonsensical is an adjective. What's the noun? Noun, of course, is nonsense. What's the adverb? Nonsensically. He was speaking nonsensically. His comments were nonsensical. He spoke nonsense. Get it? His comments were nonsensical because comment is a noun and if you're going to describe a noun we need an adjective and the adjective would be nonsensical. And that answer choice is it's just pure nonsense. Answer choice B says that maximum value for activity maximum activity is at 6.6. .6. No, the maximum activity is not at 6.6. .6. Activity is measured on the y-axis and the maximum activity is at 10. We already established that. And A says that the highest value, highest value of pH is 100. And even I, even I know that's rubbish because I remember a little bit of the chemistry that uh, I remember a little bit of what I learned in the chemistry, chemistry course uh, as a young boy in the high school many 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 moons ago as I said I'm not a medical person but I do remember a little bit of uh, chemistry and I believe the highest you can get in the pH scale is 7 isn't it? I'm pretty sure I'm sure 100 will be very acidic the silly the answer is C as you can see right there Tomorrow will be our very last day in the, in the program and I'll see you tomorrow for the very last time as I said. Okay, bye now.